Expected value is one of the most common analytical devices in business analysis. Expected value gives us a way of choosing between options whose eventual outcome right now isn't completely clear. Now, that's what is being asked after in this particular scenario. Let's look. The Regional Disaster Relief Manager has activated the alert system for volunteers. Okay, so this is a follow-up on that request for emergency shelter to de be deployed for uh, evacuees of a wildland fire. Okay, now, what, what's new? If the manager simply waits, the usual number of volunteers will arrive within an hour, it's about 70% of the time. Oh, wait a minute, the usual number. That's right, from the earlier scenario, there was a source of uncertainty, volunteer turnout. This is from earlier. And that uncertainty could be described as three future states of nature of which one of them just got quoted to us. Turnout could be rather poor. That's not what was just quoted to us. It could be usual. That's what was just quoted to us. And it could be distinctly good. And say, um, okay. Now, what's new, this is from the other scenario. What's new is this fact. And okay, for now, I'm just going to kind of try to remember it. 70% of the time, they think that's going to happen. Fine. Now, wait a minute. What's this paragraph right, right here? The manager knows that volunteer turnout can be boosted by organizing a phone tree among the early arriving volunteers who personally contact other past volunteers and ask them to help. The manager reserves the phone tree protocol for only the most urgent responses because it, okay, interesting, delays the start of packing by a half hour. That is to say it increases turnout time, so to speak. Nonetheless, phone tree operation guarantees no no, rather poor turnout, bringing in distinctly good or usual turnout about half the time. Um, all right, now what is the expected value of the estimated time, estimated time of arrival at the shelter site with and without the phone tree? Oh, all right, so we have to recall some facts from the scenario before. First, there were these three future states of nature. And actually, in the scenario before, there wasn't any mention of a phone tree. So that would be the option of no phone tree. I might as well make this a little workspace for that because we're being asked to assess that option. OK, no phone tree. Now. The consequence that we're concerned about is the estimated time of arrival. And we saw this in the scenario before. Because in the scenario before, if you're not talking about phone trees or anything, they wait about an hour, then they load out, then there's travel time. Meaning that they wait about an hour if turnout's rather poor, and it's going to take them eight hours to uh, load out because of the rather poor turnout and then seven hours to travel and this is all like from last time deja vu it would take 16 hours to get to the scene that's their ETA whereas with the usual turnout they still have to wait an hour but with the usual turnout they can load up in four hours and then they travel for seven hours and so the ETA is 12 hours and then with distinctly good turnout they can get done in half the time, so it's only two hours to load out, and then still seven hours to travel, 10 hours. Oh, well, this, this we all knew from last time, right? So what's their ETA? It might be anything from 16 hours to 10 hours. We don't know which one of those things is going to happen. With this scenario, that was all the past scenario. With this scenario, now we know something. We, we know or they feel that there's a 70% probability that it will be usual turnout. Ah. We can expand this probability. Probability. There we go. Because they gave us a fact only concerning usual. They said usual turnout, 70% chance. Now that leaves us wondering in this case. 
what's the probability for rather poor and what's the probability for rather good. There was no actual percent probability quoted for that, but they did tell us what those probabilities were as well. If we go back up at the comment, if turnout is not usual, it is equally likely, meaning same probability, to be distinctly poor, that one, or distinctly good, that one. You say, all right, so I know that whatever number belongs here and whatever number belongs there has to be the same number because they're equally likely, but it still doesn't tell me what the number is. It doesn't tell you what the number is until you realize that that's all there is to the story, meaning that all the numbers have to add up to 100% because we've accounted for there's only these three futures and that's everything that could happen. Oh, all right, so let's see. Uh, we know that 75% 70 of the time there will be the usual turnout and 30% 30% of the time there won't be the usual turnout. There will either be rather poor or distinctly good. They have the same probability, so you take the 30% and you split it between them. I get 15% and 15%. Add these up, they add up to 100%. That's what I was looking for. They're both the same number. That's the probabilities without the phone tree. I um, say, well, okay, fine, um, <clears throat> why do I care? Because you were asked what's the expected value of this particular option. And to calculate expected value, you, for an option, like, you know, operating without the phone tree, you look at each consequence and you multiply it by the probability of that actually happening. And you roll all that up into a single value that is expected value. So, here, expected value, I say, all right, well, ETA could be 16 hours, fine, 16, except we believe there's a 15% chance of that happening, so multiply that times 15% in decimal places is 0.51, take 15% of the 16. Now, wait a minute, combine that with the fact that we think it could also be 12 hours, and we think that there's a 70% chance of that happening. So take that 12 and multiply it times 0.7, take 70% of the 12 hours, and then claim the 10 hours, except you only believe there's a 15% chance of that happening. So it's 10 times that same 15%. I get, all right, 16 times 0.15 plus 12 times 0.7 plus 10 times 0.15. I did that and I got expected value without the phone tree 12.3 hours, which is, I believe, 12 hours and 18 minutes. So no phone tree, expected value 12.3 hours. Oh, so, okay. Now that is, that's what we would, that's what we would call the expected value of that option. Although um, it asked with and without the phone tree, and the only thing we did was no phone tree, which is to say without phone tree. Uh, oh, oh, so we better repeat the exercise for with phone tree. Okay, with phone tree. With phone tree, repeat the exercise. All right, well, repeat the exercise. We're gonna need all these same headers. Volunteer turnout. What's the ETA and what's the probability? That's going to get us set up to do the expected value calculations. Volunteer turnout, ETA, probability. And this doesn't change here. The future states of nature, it doesn't matter whether you use a phone tree or not. It's still, well, there might be rather poor usual or distinctly good. Um, now wait, whoops, ETA. ETA without the phone tree. This seems like there was something to be concerned about. Why did the manager not always use the phone tree? The manager reserves the phone tree only for most urgent because it delays the start of packing by a half hour 
I knew we were going to use that fact somewhere. That's going to delay the ETA. If you think about it, normally they wait an hour before they start packing. What this is saying is that if you use the phone tray, then you're going to wait an hour and a half before packing. None of the rest of this will change. If you have a rather poor turnout, it'll take eight hours to pack and then seven hours to travel. So basically the reason that the manager hesitates to use the phone tree all the time is because by the time you add up those three delays in the case of the phone tree you're going to get the exact same number except it's going to be a half hour longer 16.5 12.5 10.5 because that's that business about the half hour delay for packing you said yeah okay all right, now wait a minute. Oh, what else is going to be different here? The probabilities. Right, because that's not the real reason for the phone tree. That's, not, that's actually not a good thing that it delays the start of packing. Why might you be interested in the phone tree? What does it do to the probabilities? Okay, nonetheless, the phone tree operation guarantees no rather poor turnout. That is a probability of zero. That's what this means. Okay, that can't happen. Um, bringing in distinctly good volunteer turnout about half about half of the time is 50-50. All right, and then no comment on the usual turnout except it's the only thing missing here and again it's got to add up to 100%. Ah, so that's why you might consider using the phone tree because if you do, despite the half hour delay, basically then you know there's only two things that could happen and it's 50-50 flip of a coin whether you have usual or distinctly good. Oh, all right. Now, why did we do this table? Because we're going to calculate the expected value of the ETA using the phone tree because we don't know, you know, with that extra delay if necessarily still you would want to do this. Okay, well, expected value. Expected value with the phone tree, you say this times this plus this times this plus this times this. So, 16.5 times 0, you know, I didn't need to write that, but I went ahead and wrote it, plus 12.5 times 50% is 0 0.5 plus 10.5 times 50% is 0.5. Basically take half of this and add it to half of that. That's what the expected value of using the phone tree is. Alright, I did that and I get 11.5 hours. 11 and a half hours. The expected value with the phone tree is 11 and a half hours. All right, now it asks what's the expected value with or without, without 12.3 hours, with 11.5 hours. It sneaks, sneaks in a question there at the bottom of the page. Should the incident manager ask arriving volunteers to begin making phone calls? That is to say these are options. Don't use a phone tree, do use a phone tree. Which option should the manager pick? All right, based on expected value, the answer to this question here is definitely yes. Lower expected value of ETA. Now, having made that judgment, just to be careful, okay, you don't always look here for the lower number. You, you have to ask yourself, what is it that I was calculating the expected value of? Well, the estimated time of arrival. Is it better for that to be smaller or larger? Well, seeing as how we're going to an emergency, it's better for that to be smaller, like we get there sooner. Ah, that's what made the 11.5 hours uh, more attractive. Definitely use the phone tree. If we had, for instance, been calculating the expected value of profit on an investment, well, more profit's better, right? Yeah true. So comparing investments there we would be looking at the higher value. It's not a strict rule whether you're looking for the lower or the higher. It's just logic. What is it that you'd like out of the situation?